So this is the new stitchery and I've almost completed it. I've just left a few things that I wanted to show you. And the one thing I did go ahead and finish were all the stem stitches because I've gone over that several times on past videos. So if you need to know how to do the stem stitch, you can look at one of the older videos. And let's see, how about if I start with these little blue flowers? I thought those were really sweet. Um, I played around with a couple of different ways of doing it, and actually the one that I ended up with is really, really simple. So I'm using my blue thread. This is the tealish, tealish blue, something like that. And the first thing I'm going to want to do, and this is Valdani thread, 12 weight pearl cotton, is I'm going to make a fly stitch. So I'm going to start on one side of the little U, and I could have drawn that on there a little darker for you so you can see it. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so that's what will be on your pattern. So you start on one side of the little U, you pull the thread up, put the needle down on the other side of the U, and then pull the needle up right where the stem hits that. And we're gonna take the thread under the needle and you pull it towards that loop and then you're just gonna tack it on the other side. So now we have a little fly stitch. And then all I did was I took a couple of stitches, just little straight stitches from the top to the bottom, and then another one from the top down to the bottom. And that's it. Pretty simple, huh? Another flower on here is kind of inspired by Queen Anne's Lace. Loosely inspired, I should say. And these are just stem stitches for the main veins. And then these little cat parts on the top are fly stitches, just like we did on the blue piece that we just finished. So you start on one side, and put your needle down on the other side, bring your needle up at the base, the thread goes under the needle, and then we're just gonna tack it on the other side. And we're gonna go all the way across and do all these little Vs. Pretty simple, but it adds a nice little texture at the top of these guys. So to top these off, we're gonna put little French knots like these. And I went around the needle two times. So I'm gonna take the thread up on my dot. I'm gonna wrap the thread around two times, kind of hold it in place with my finger there, put it down right next to where I came up, pull those wraps down to the fabric, and then I hold them in place on the front and the back of the fabric and pull my thread. And I just did like a couple rows of those. And they go pretty quick. Now using the same uh, tarnished gold colored thread, I'm going to stitch some of the stripes on these little bees. So these little bees are really simple and you're just going to, going to use the uh, black sea the tarnished gold, and then the tea dyed stone for the wings. So I'm starting with just the stripes, and that's done with a really simple satin stitch. And it takes about three little satin stitches to make a, a stripe on the bee. So there's one, two, and three. I've already done the black, as you can see, and that's how fast these little bees go. You don't want to pull too tight because that will make them a really skinny bee and we want nice fat bees. All right, that is how simple those those stripes are, just like that. The other part of the bee, we want to do little legs and they do have, he has knees because I like, I always like that saying, the bee's knees. 
So I just take one stitch that direction and one stitch this direction. And there's his hind leg. And then just repeat that up here. And then the other thing he really needs are a couple of antenna. And those are just going to be straight stitches too. Now to really finish it off, I felt like it needed to have an outline around it to really make him stand out. He might not need it, but I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm doing that since it's so tiny, I'm doing it with a, a, a back stitch. So you can start anywhere around here and you're just going to take a small stitch and you start off kind of like you're just doing a running stitch up and down, but instead of continuing forward, I'm going to go back in the same hole as where the last stitch ended. And I'm just going to go all the way around him. To really finish him off there. Now on the big B on the watering can, I didn't outline him. I think there was enough color contrast to really make him stand out since he was so big. And I did that the same way. I just did the stripes. Well, actually I didn't, I lied. Um, this one, I did the stripes instead of a satin stitch since it's so wide. I just did a few rows of stem stitches just touching each other. And uh, I'm not gonna outline him. I think he's he's fine just the way he is. Okay, so I have a couple more stitches to go around this little guy. And then we'll move on. I'll show you how to do his wings. So the wing I did using a the tea tied stone color. And I just used a back stitch since it's so small. So it might be easier to see it this way. I know that black kind of blended in, but you're going to just take a small, let me get eighth of an inch, maybe even a little bit smaller, and an eighth of an inch. And then put your needle right back in that same hole that the last stitch ended in. And just go, oh, sorry. <laughs> and then just go all the way around his wings. So these little bees are pretty darn quick, but they add so much. It's, you know, if you didn't have these bees on here, it would really be missing something. I think it's really important to try to have something living in a design if it's possible. And um, bees make a nice quick little living object there. So there's a finished little bee. For the big B, I went ahead and did a stem stitch around, but you could do a back stitch if you want. And then I did some back stitches inside the wings. And this is with the tea dyed stone again. And then these little kind of oddball ones, they're just little straight stitches. So just up and down, kind of filled it in a little bit. You know how you can, if you look real carefully at their wings, they're transparent, but you can see little lines. I don't know if those are veins or what those are, but this is what I'm trying to mimic here. And I think one more should do it. And now that big bee's all done. When I tie a knot on the back of my piece, what I'll do is I'll wrap the thread around a couple times and I'm holding onto it and I just bring those wraps down to the fabric, put my finger on it and pull tight. And then I do another one. And this time I'm gonna put my fingers in there and bring that knot down to maybe a quarter of an inch above the fabric and pull it tight. And in that little space between the knots, then I snip and now my thread is ready to go. We've done the fan leaf stitch before, and that is what I used on all of these leaves. 
I did a couple different greens. It's kind of hard to tell, but I think it added a little bit to have a little variety there. So these outside little branches are using the lichen moss. And then the ones in the center and these are using the um, olive green. So to do these leaves, these kind of have a rounded point instead of, well, a rounded tip, I guess, instead of a point. So you bring, I, what I do is I bring the needle up at the top of the leaf, down at the base of the leaf, and then I'm gonna come up on one side and then back in that same hole on the base. And I'm just gonna keep following the edge of that leaf right where it's drawn, right on the drawn line. And I'm gonna go over to the other side and keep going in that same hole in the bottom. And super fast way to fill in a leaf. And I thought it was kind of fun to have a little variety. So these are pointed, these are pointed, and then these have more softer, a little round. And then these down here, this is just a little lazy daisy stitch, which we've gone over many, many times. Um, and then it's just a stem stitch. Now we have one more flower to go. Last month, we did a lot of circles, and I showed you several different ways to fill the circles in. And this time, these are a little bit smaller, and I wanted to show you this fun way. It's an inverted buttonhole stitch. So you start on the outside line, and you're going to take your needle down right in the center. And what I like to do, because you can have so many stitches going into that center hole, I like to kind of, oops, try to make that hole a little bit bigger. I'll kind of push my needle around like that. Okay, so now you're gonna take the needle up right next to where it began on the outside, and your thread is gonna go under your needle. And that's the first stitch. Now the thread's gonna go, or the needle's gonna go right back in the center, and I'm gonna come up right next to that first stitch the thread just continues to go under the needle. And you just keep going around and around and around until it's all filled in. I really like the way these turn out because they kind of have that little dot in the center, which it would be kind of fun too. You could do like a French knot and the tarnished gold right in the center. That might be cute. But I kind of like that dark little dot. And we just keep going around. Okay, so when you do your final stitch, you've come all the way around. You're just going to take the needle down on the outside of the circle to tack that last stitch in place. And there you have it. So this little watering can was inspired by one I actually have. It looks kind of like a beehive. And so I thought it would be cute to, to make this one kind of the same shape and then add the bee in the center. So I hope you enjoyed stitching this one. I'll show you the other way of doing it too, where it's just very, very simple. I'll show you what it looks like. So here's the one I just finished. My cat is sitting where I normally sit and I didn't want to move her. So she's going to share the spotlight with me. And then I stitched it up again. And this time what I did is I just used a single color and then added a little bit of color on the bees. So I still made the bees the same way as the other one with the gold, the black, and the gray, but everything else is just a really soft green. So on the bee, the big bee, look at this girl, she's so funny. So on the big bee, I, the one thing I changed is I only did every other stripe because if I filled the whole thing in, he'd just be a solid, he'd look like a fly. So um, the other thing I did is I did the flowers the same, but on all the leaves, instead of doing the fan leaf, I just did a really simple stem stitch all the way around. Okay, she's just really, really enjoying this. This is Sadie, by the way. Say hi. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed this one. I can't wait to see your finished stitcheries, and I will see you next month. Bye.